Hello, and welcome to the Performance Management Evaluation Guide Overview for the FLEX program. I'm Sally Buck, CEO and Program Director of the National Rural Health Resource Center and the Technical Systems Services Center, or TASC. We're welcoming you all today. Uh, we will be launching into a webinar um, regarding a new tool. And up now we have a pre-test on performance management and program evaluation. So if you haven't clicked on those two questions, please do so. And then we will be posting questions at the end of the webinar as well for our pre-post test. So the evaluation guide was identified um, several months ago as a topic um, for TASC, and we talked with FORGP that it seemed like it was time to um, revisit our evaluation toolkit that was created over six years ago for the FLEX program. Um, we were all were entering a new cycle with the state FLEX grant. Um, the Previous toolkit was created even before, before the PIMS measures um, were required in the program as well. So we uh, approached the, um, the guide as an opportunity uh, to look at how the FLEX program has changed and as we are all working towards um, activities now in, in population health and a new focus on EMS, as well as um, rolling into um, national measures in MBQIP and using COMPASS and so forth. So a lot of uh, new components that were available, as well as moving towards showing overall outcomes and impact of the FLEX program. So TASC engaged uh, Rochelle Schultz-Benarski as our subject matter expert. Uh, she's the principal with Rural Health Solutions, and Michelle brings over 20 years of experience with the FLEX program. Um, she began uh, working in FLEX in the Minnesota Office of Rural Health and Primary Care, and then has um, been working um, with a number of states and programs, both of FLEX and other state and national health programs, and been very involved with program evaluation since 1993. So uh, Rochelle is going to uh, walk us through the, the guide, and we do have um, the guide available as a download there on the, the left-hand screen of the Adobe as a, a file share, and it will be posted also on the center as a new uh, resource. So Rochelle, we'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Sally. Um, hi, everybody. This is Rochelle Spinarski. Can somebody just confirm that you can hear me okay? Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, as Sally said, I am going to walk through the performance management program evaluation guide today. Um, I'm not the this walkthrough isn't going into is going, isn't going to get into all of the details of the guide, but really just to um, point out some of the highlights and also just to share kind of how it's structured um, and um, some kind of key points um, just to kind of be aware of as you look at the guide and use the guide. Um, uh, one of the things I'd like to start with before we actually kind of dig into the guide is just to kind of give everybody an overview of how the guide was developed um, because there were a number of folks that provided input um, beyond um, me and so I'd really like to acknowledge their input and um, kind of the process that we use to develop the guide. Uh, so the center, um, the task team um, definitely provided lots of input um, and this was really a team approach in terms of um, guidance throughout its development, Sally, but also the whole team. Um, the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy has been participating in its development, um, namely Sarah Young. So thank you, Sarah, for all of your contributions. 
Um, the flex monitoring team has been participating. I think John Gill has been kind of the primary there. Most of you are probably familiar with John. And then we've also um, included a number of uh, flex program state office of rural health staff in the development, um, really to get input um, from at the state level, but also to review and provide some comments as we've been developing the tool. Uh, just to make sure that it is meeting needs, but then also um, includes some important components that we know have been going on in state offices and in particular with the FLEX program. The other group that's not acknowledged here that has actually um, played a role in the development was everyone might be aware that the Wisconsin State Office of Rural Health puts on an annual data summit. And we did discuss evaluation during that data summit. I got some input from the folks at that uh, data summit and um, she and, and the people who were at the data summit, um, they too provided input into this. So there were a number of people <laughs> at the data summit um, who were, um, who participated in that. And then also not listed, but I should also acknowledge um, Christy Edwards. So, so thank you, Christy. Sorry, I forgot to put your name on the slide as well. Um, but Christy Edwards also participated in the development. So as you can see, there's been a lot of hands on board. Um, we wanted to make sure that um, it was, you know, it's a, a live kind of active tool that everybody can use. And I'm hoping that um, that's, that is what it's translated into given all of the great input that we've had throughout the process. So with that said, I am going to move on um, to just kind of talking about what's in the guide um, and just giving some highlights. Now, Sally, I haven't used this tool before, so if people have questions, I'm assuming it's going to show up in the chat box. Is that correct? Yes. That's yep. Open to everybody? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, great. All right, so if you do have questions, um, I tend to kind of focus on the slides, but I'll keep my eyes on the chat box in case you have some questions. Um, and then as Sally did note, um, everybody is going to ha everybody has access to the guide and um, you can also find it out on the center's website. So um, as to provide the highlights of the guide, I'm just going to walk through a, be a bit of each one of the sections in the guide, um, starting with kind of, um, how the guide is structured, then move into some of the basics about the guide. There's um, a lot of basic information in it. Move into evaluation planning, getting started, then on to data collection and sources. Um, next into organizing your data, then making improvements, communicating results, and then there's a whole list of attachments. So we're going to kind of move through each section um, I'm just going to provide a few highlights related to each one of those sections um, and then also point out a few specifics that I think um, everybody might be interested in. So the guide structure itself, um, there is some consistency um, throughout the guide and we tried to make it consistent so that when you're using it, you're kind of expecting some of the key, um, some key pieces within each one of the sections. Um, so each section has basically an overview within that section, whatever it's about. There are some key takeaways um, within that section, and those are a couple of items that we really think are important um, for you to get out of the guide. In particular, if uh, you're new to evaluation um, and to performance management, because both of these are um, described throughout the whole process. Within each one of those sections, there are terms and concepts and definitions. So anything that we think should, uh, that you should be aware of if you're not familiar with it. I know some of you who are really familiar with performance management and evaluation, um, those will not be new to you. For others, they might be new. Um, throughout, there's a lot of visuals in terms of process um, because as you're going to see in the guide, Evaluation really is a process, so we walk through uh, various processes and try and create some visuals to explain that. There's uh, summaries of data collection methods, and those are broken out using some samples, um, but also descriptions. Lots of tools and resources throughout the guide, but then there are also evaluation resources and um, several attachments and tools 
um, that are included at the very end. So um, that's the general structure of the guide. And as I said, um, it, it, each section kind of flows in the same manner. So we start with the basics um, in terms of um, evaluation and, um, uh, and, and working through each one of the steps. Um, we start with kind of what, what is program evaluation and why. Um, if you don't know what program evaluation is, and specifically performance management, that's okay because this guide actually walks you through each one of those and the details related to both of those. But basically, program evaluation is about collecting data to make decisions about your program, um, to make decisions about your flex program. And so um, it walks through questions um, and even kind of thinking about um, what does that mean? Um, the other thing that um, the basics covered is just sort of the um, why of um, program evaluation and also performance and, uh, management. Um, there's many different reasons why, um, not just that the FLEX program um, from the Federal Office of Rural Health Policies requirements requires evaluation, but also as an opportunity to uh, improve your, uh, engage your stakeholders, improve your program, uh, encourage and create opportunities for program um, revisions. Uh, just really the planning and the program development piece are all built into evaluation and performance management as well. And all of that is described in this basic section. From the basics um, piece, um, we move right into um, information specific to performance management. I saw in the opening um, questions, uh, the, this little survey that was held that some, some of you are really familiar with performance management. Others, uh, performance management is a new concept. And that is perfectly fine in terms of this guide because um, the guide is really intended to speak to those who are completely new to this topic, but then also provide some tips, resources, tools that have a fairly well-developed evaluation and performance management program. So it really does speak to everybody. Um, it walks through um, definitions related to inputs, processes, outputs, outcomes, and then it also moves on to describe performance management in terms of collecting information, um, collecting measurement data, using those measures, and then moving on to performance management. So as I said earlier, one of the key things in this tool is so much is about process and moving through a process in terms of both performance management and evaluation. And this um, whole discussion here is going to be is about uh, performance management as a process and the different steps that you'll be taking in order to um, do performance management. Uh, the next portion is uh, focuses a little bit more on the evaluation side. Um, performance management leads to evaluation. And so it speaks to the goals, objectives, and examining impact as a part of an evaluation. Um, as you know, um, the nationally, the FLEX program has pro program areas and goals um, as a part of the FLEX program. So for example, there are those goals related to quality improvement, financial and operational improvement, uh, and those are consistent across the program. Um, so we talk about those goals, but then we also talk about creating objectives. Um, in here, um, the next step then is to create those objectives for each one of your program areas and then developing your, uh, your evaluation based on those objectives. And it really kind of walks through that process. It describes goals. It describes objectives. And then it moves on to connecting those along with your performance management activities into examining impact with the ultimate goal of trying to um, connect 
your FLEX program participation with whatever your goals and objectives are in terms of determining impact. So as FLEX program participation increases, does, does CH quality increase? Does CH uh, finances and performance, do they improve or increase? That's what you're looking at when you're thinking about impact. And the guide walks you through that in terms of how do you think about that and how do you measure it. Once all of this basic kind of background information is um, talked about and described, then um, we sort of wrap it up in a, in a bow type of way and, and put it all together of how all of these pieces kind of flow through the cycle of performance management and evaluation. Again, it's a whole cycle of different steps and activities um, that states are taking in order to do performance management and um, include that as a part of your evaluation process. And the, the whole flow, as you can imagine, um, is all working towards continuous improvement. It's not a cycle that stops, it's a cycle that flows. Uh, and it flows um, continuously throughout your program as a part of program operations. So as we're talking about this within the guide, one of the key pieces that's really important about, um, about doing this process and really thinking about what's provided in the guide is the fact that when you're doing your evaluation, when you're doing performance management, it's not about doing something completely separate and outside of your program. It's really about incorporating all of these elements into your program operations. And so that's the whole theme and kind of flow that you see as you walk through the guide and as you're looking at each one of these components to actually develop your evaluation plans and put those, um, those process management pieces in place. The next piece in the um, guide is about planning. Um, so after we you know, do the background, we put it all together. Um, it, it kind of backtracks and goes back to square one to to walk through the whole process of if you're going to develop your evaluation um, and your performance management plans, what's that going to look like? And it's really going to start back at the planning piece. And many of you already have many of the components in place. Um, you did that as a part of your um, the NOFO work that you did uh, back in the spring of 2019. Um, and it, it, flowed for, it, it will flow from your five-year summary plan that you developed, your performance, your work plan. Um, those are two kind of key pieces. And one of the things we really do in the guide is talk about how, how those um, two pieces really fit into performance management and evaluation. Um, I discuss both of those um, in terms of um, how you can use both the five-year plan and the performance year work plan uh, as you're developing your evaluation plans, and then also kind of how you tie the two together um, so that when you're doing your PIMS reporting, you're actually gathering data throughout the year so that PIMS reporting isn't um, a huge challenge or a burden. The other piece to that is um, being able to use your PIMS data as a part of your evaluation activities. So all three of those um, definitely can fit into your evaluation plans, should be a part of your evaluation plans, and um, fit into this process that we're talking about. The other piece that, that is included as a part of the um, evaluation planning process is um, a series of key questions to ask yourselves and your program and your team as you're planning your evaluation. And um, the, the key to these questions, um, I'll go to those questions now, is really um, to identify 
identify the priorities, what you want to learn from your evaluation, what you're looking to get out of your evaluation. Um, walking through all of the different activities that you're working on, all of the different um, goals, objectives that you've set up as a part of your FLEX program plans, and considering um, these questions as you develop your evaluation plans because these are the questions that are going to lead you towards um, thinking about next steps in terms of actually putting together the structure for your evaluation. In addition to these key questions, I also have a list of um, questions that apply to any of our FLEX program teams that are using vendors or contractors as a part of your um, FLEX program because there are, um, in some instances, there are some states that are using um, a quite a bit of contractor work um, in order to accomplish their flex program activities. So if you happen to be a state that is doing this work um, or is contracting for services, those additional questions um, are also really helpful so that you can make sure that you're getting the data that you need and um, that the data that you're getting is in an effective format so that you can easily use it for your internal evaluation activities, but then also for any of the PIMS reporting and um, other um, NOFO-related reporting that you're doing as a part of your uh, performance management. So keep that in mind. Um, definitely look for those if you are um, contracting for services um, because they just take these key questions to the next step um, to make sure that you've covered your bases there as well. I'm just going to take a quick pause here um, before I move on to some of the next slides and kind of getting started into the um, evaluation work. Does anybody have any questions before I move on to the next sections? All right, I don't see any questions, but don't hesitate to ask as we kind of move through these. So as we get started um, and actually organizing measures, looking, thinking about collecting data, organizing your data, um, there are um, several tools that are included as a, right in the document, but there's also um, several tools that are included as attachments or as attachments. I should note that the any of the tools that are included, they're just, you know, they're there for um, as examples. Um, they're in a format where you can cut and paste them if they're helpful or to expand on them. Um, but the intent here is really to kind of give you an idea of how some of these, um, how each one of these activities and how the process flows from doing your planning to developing your measures to collecting the data um, and having a place to actually store your data so that you can do some easy analysis um, as a part of your whole program improvement. So keep that in mind. Um, we also acknowledge in the tool that um, some of you are using, for example, TrueServe as a part of your data collection efforts. Um, that, that is acknowledged um, in the guide as well. We know that um, that's working for a lot of folks, and so there's no any recommendations to make any changes there. It's all about um, figuring out what you're doing in terms of collecting data and then finding the um, correct way to organize that data and then use that data. In some instances, you may have some data that's missing, so you're going to need to collect some additional data um, but in many instances, you will have that data collected throughout your process if you have incorporated all of your data collection activities into your program operations. So again, that's key to make sure that you incorporate your program, op your program evaluation activities into your program operations. So this... Um, start out with um, in terms of organizing measures. Um, the, the first part of it is really organizing um, and developing a work plan for your evaluation. All different types of structures that you can use to actually develop that. You can incorporate it into 
um, the tables that you created as a part of your NOFO. You can create it as something that's separate. Um, I recommend that you keep those, those um, both your work plan and any of your other data collection tables in a very easily accessible um, spot so that you can merge your data very easily. Um, but it's really up to you in terms of how you want to structure your evaluation plan. So here I give you just kind of a work plan sample of how you can structure um, your work plan. Then I also give you an example based on that work plan structure of an evaluation dating tracking tool, something that would you could use to actually track that data. And so for any of these, um, for all of the samples and all of the tools, they all line up and they connect with one another so that as you work through the guide, you are seeing the objectives that then flow into the work plan sample that flows then into the data tracking sample and then that, that flows into the actual reporting piece. So that all of those pieces that they're developing over time, but I'm using the same examples throughout so that um, it's just really building on one another. Um, the other piece is the organizing the data, which is this data tracking sample, which you can see on your screen. Just as I said, it's just an example of a way to um, organize your data in a simple format where it's um, you're just putting in, putting the data into the tool and then it can actually do the calculations for you that are going to feed back into that work plan sample that I have indicated above. Now I haven't talked about the primary and secondary data collection, but there is a, um, there is a big section in the guide on data collection methods. Uh, the, this, this section is um, again, it's laid out basically in the same format for each one of the different data collection methods. It discusses surveys and questionnaires, checklist polls, pre and post tests um, that you may be conducting as a part of your evaluation. Um, it covers focus groups, case studies, interviews, documentation reviews, and then other secondary data. And for the FLEX program, other secondary data is an important piece. Um, because there are a lot of um, other data that we're tap tapping into on a regular basis um, that everybody should consider uh, using as a part of your evaluation process. So for each one of these data collection methods, um, the guide uh, will cover kind of the pros and cons, the strengths and weaknesses of that data collection method, um, some examples of how that data collection method is used in the FLEX program, and then if there are any links specific to that particular data collection method. So for example, in this first one, which covers surveys, questionnaires, etc., I included a couple of um, examples and links of tools that um, FLEX programs are using as a part of, their, of your data collection efforts. Um, and this, this is kind of the, um, the way each one of the data collection methods is outlined. Um, the other thing that I can say and I'll be um, talking about as a part of the attachments section is that there are also some specific attachments that relate back directly to each one of these data collection methods. Once your data collection um, has occurred um, and you have your data in um, your data tracking, uh, I have a sample here, but in your data tracking tools, um, then you will be working through your process. Um, you've been working around your process of making improvements um, towards being able to communicate results. And um, for making improvements, the guide really um, puts this in, within the context of this, of the PDSA model. I think many of you are familiar with PDSA. 
Um, it's something that many of us use when we're talking about quality improvement with our critical access hospitals. Um, we talk about this when we're um, working on performance and financial improvement within our critical access hospitals. And so, and it's really the same um, philosophy that we're working with with our critical access hospitals that we're also working with when we're talking about um, our own program improvements and evaluation. So, using the same model, I walk through the Plan, Do, Study, Act and um, how that relates specifically to each one of the steps in the process of working on performance management, but also um, as a part of your evaluation. And you can really see this if you, when you're thinking about your program, because we begin the whole process of performance management and evaluation by identifying our program objectives, developing our program plans, deciding how, when, and what to measure. So that's all of the planning process in the PDSA cycle. Then we go on and we do the activity and we collect the measurement data. So we actually do the piece in the PDSA cycle. And then we go on and analyze and interpret our findings. So we're then doing the studying components within this whole cycle. And then we use the findings to make um, informed decisions. So we're doing the act part of the cycle. And again, it is a cycle, so we're just working through the cycle. We build our measurement activities into our program activities so that as we're working through doing activities, learning from what we've been measuring, we can then make program adjustments and continue through the cycle. So it really is a whole PDSA cycle that we're doing in performance management, just like when we talk to our critical access hospitals about their quality improvement and their quality improvement cycle. And the guide discusses that and gives some examples about working through that process. Once we've worked through that, there's then also that piece about communicating results. And some of our FLEX programs are communicating results um, in different ways. Um, and um, some, some of us are um, still getting started on communicating results. But there are lots of different methods on how we can um, communicate those results. Uh, we've in, I've included some examples in the guide of what, uh, some, what some of you are doing. Um, some of you have those right out on the web. Um, others have, uh, may be communicating this information in different ways. So I've pulled um, some examples directly from the web so you can look at those there. But in terms of who to communicate to, it's examples of communicating to team members, to critical access hospitals, to your program partners to your funders, so as I mentioned earlier, you're going to be communicating information back to the federal office as a part of your NOFO and also PIMS reporting, and then any others um, that you're working with or that you may be communicating to. For example, um, if you have a state rural health conference, you may be communicating results out to them. Then there's the what and how of communicating. It could be through a dashboard. So if you are creating a dashboard as a part of your program planning process, and that may be one way that you're actually tracking your data, um, you may be using that dashboard to report those results out. Not too different from what we do on the quality improvement side with FLEX for our critical access hospitals, but then also on the financial operational improvement side with our critical access hospitals as well. Um, you may be doing some kind of an annual report that you report out to um, your Department of Health or to, if you're in a hospital association to your hospital association board. You may have a specific evaluation report that you're reporting out. You may do a video for those that are a little bit more tech savvy, a website and social media, um, or in a newsletter. Um, it could be that you're, you, you don't send out all of your evaluation findings at one time, but Throughout the year, if you have a newsletter, you may be um, showcasing different bits and pieces um, throughout the year in uh, a monthly newsletter or quarterly newsletter that your state office of rural health or even your FLEX program um, is creating. So lots of different opportunities 
on who to include in communicating the results, but also the what and how um, of communicating those results. As I noted, um, the guide has many attachments. Um, I tried to include as many uh, samples and um, diagrams within the document itself so that it, it directly correlates back to what's being discussed. But then to supplement that, I um, also included some more in-depth examples and descriptions and sources um, in the attachment section. For those of you that have a lot of um, evaluation work underway, um, this this section um, may have some, some pieces that you can tap into um, to expand some of your evaluation activities, in particular some of the tools and samples um, that are included. And I should note that some of these tools and samples that are included um, come directly from um, state offices, um, from your FLEX programs and those that are being used in um, FLEX programs right now. So it starts, um, the attachments start with just a discussion and decision-making guide that really gets back to some of those key questions um, that I talked about earlier um, that you should be thinking about as you walk through decision-making related to evaluation planning. Then there are some work plan samples that really um, expand upon the work plan samples that are in the guide itself. Balance scorecard samples are included. There is a discussion in the guide about balance scorecard and using this as a um, format for your evaluation planning. Um, there's other samples, so for example, logic models. Um, there are logic models are discussed in the guide. And um, if, you're, if you're familiar with logic models and you think about the whole kind of performance management process, um, it should look really familiar in terms of logic models because that's the foundation for logic models. So there's a discussion of logic models and how can you how you can incorporate those into um, your evaluation activities. Um, there's also a list of Flex program partners and technical assistance um, and some other evaluation resources. There are definitely some evaluation resources. Um, that I tap into when I'm working on evaluation activities, so I've shared those there. And then within FLEX programs, um, there are uh, evaluation resources. So TASC has um, many evaluation resources that are available, then opportunities for you to communicate with one another about needs. And then um, some of our FLEX program team members have volunteered um, to answer questions and be a resource, so they are listed in there as well. Then, um, and I'm going to walk through some of these and show you just some highlights of them, but then I also have some um, tools and samples that you can use um, specifically for your evaluation. Um, it doesn't, they don't all lay out all of the questions that you might be looking at, but it gives you the framework for doing um, focus groups so a guide on developing those questions, what to be thinking about when you're um, developing your questions, then also how to structure your focus groups if that's one of the methods you want to use as a part of your evaluation process. Then there are, there's a pre and post test sample with questions included. Um, if you want to incorporate that into your evaluation, uh, some workshop and conference measurement samples, there's an evalu event follow-up questionnaire, um, that you can use some guidelines for creating a survey or questionnaire. Um, and those guidelines are really just some key points to think about as you're developing a questionnaire um, because it's um, questionnaires can get really long. They can get very cumbersome. How you design the questions, um, what types of questions and styling and format you're using are all uh, really important. Um, in particular, if you are um, wanting to get a high survey response rate and to get really good information. So um, the guidelines for creating surveys um, or questionnaires, I think, is um, a really important piece um, if you are doing surveys and questionnaires. And then some strategies um, if you're assessing training. I know that a lot of our FLEX programs um, incorporate training into FLEX program activities. 
So both the survey, the training, the pre and um, the pre and post test samples, um, even some of the focus group um, materials will be helpful um, related to some of the training work that you're doing. And then, of course, um, the attachments include sources. Um, where did we draw our information for the guide, but then also um, information on some of our contributors. So, for example, some of our FLEX program team members. Here are just some examples of um, what's included in those attachments. So, as I said, I have the discussion decision-making guide, just a tool to help you walk through what are we going to include, what should our priorities be um, as we um, create our evaluation as we think about our questions, as we think about what, what data we really want to collect. Because one of the things you don't want to do um, is collect a lot of data and then not use it. Um, again, kind of thinking back to our work with our critical access hospitals and quality improvement, you know, one of the things I stress with critical access hospitals is always, you know, we're collecting the data so that we can use the data. So keep that in mind as you're walking through and um, developing your evaluation um, because it doesn't have to be overly burdensome, in particular if it's really targeting those questions you want to uh, answer as a part of your evaluation, but also um, if you've been really incorporated your measurement um, into the activities that you're working on. Then there is another um, evaluation work plan sample that I mentioned. Here's an example of um, what that looks like. Then I mentioned that um, there's some example logic models. Some of these logic models you've seen. Um, there's um, a few different samples of those so that you can get a, a various ideas of what that might look like. And then, as I mentioned, the FLEX program partners, um, other evaluation resources, just folks that you should be thinking about um, as you're um, developing your evaluation, as you're thinking about tools and resources. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention um, so far is um, the information on secondary data. And I should point that out because uh, we do have a lot of secondary data that we can tap into, so data that others are collecting. Um, to consider for inclusion in your evaluation. And uh, many of those are discussed in the evaluation. So for example, your MBQIP data, you can definitely use and should consider that as a primary data source. The COMPASS data, um, there, are, um, there are data that your states are collecting um, for finance collecting. That's data that you can tap into. Um, any of that, um, secondary data that you can use and easily access, especially um, if it's um, in a format that you can easily use, but also that can be you know, translated across all of the participants in your program. That just makes it a lot easier. A few, um, a couple of the other examples of things that are in here. So I had mentioned the focus group process and discussion guide. So again, it just kind of walks through what is a focus group, what do you want to include as a part of that focus group, um, and then some of, the, um, some of the ways that you can lay out your focus group questions. Workshop measurement and um, um, some samples related to that if you're conducting a workshop and how you might want to measure um, outcomes related to that. Some pre and post test samples, question structuring, and then, um, as I mentioned, the guidelines for creating a survey and questionnaire. I think that walks through the whole guide. Um, I want to know if anybody has any questions, if there's anything else, Sally, you'd like to add as a part of the guide. I know that you've um, seen the guide several times now as well, or maybe even Sarah um, Young, if you have some comments or things that you'd like to add that you think would be helpful for people to know as they tap into this guide to use it. Thanks, Rochelle. Um, I think it's a um, set up to kind of help people work from the work plan that was created in the, the NOPO or that you'll update on the NCC to getting to the point of 
doing your um, progress report for the NCC in the spring and then the annual PIMS reporting, but more importantly beyond the reporting <laughs> is using the information uh, to help you design a program that uh, meets the, the needs um, of the critical access hospitals in your state and the, the structure of hospitals and the, the partner um, ar arrangements and other technical assistance available. Um, so I will turn it over to, to Sarah um, to make some, some comments on how um, performance management um, is, is critical throughout the, the whole program year. And Sarah, star two to unmute. Yes, thank you, Sally. Um, making sure you can hear me? Yep, I'm clear. Cool. Very good. Uh, yeah, you know, first I, I want to say thank you again to Rochelle and to all of the folks who provided comments and contributions and examples for her to put together into this evaluation guide. Um, you know, I think my first takeaway in seeing the development process is once again, you all proved that we really do have great skills and knowledge within the FLEX and SOAR community. Um, and somebody in one of the state FLEX programs is doing all of these things somewhere. But this guide is really an opportunity to help us pull together those best practices and examples and um, get more consistent working together and speaking the same language with each other so that, um, you know, we're consistently doing program evaluation for the purpose of um, program management, as you and Rochelle have emphasized, so that we can, in an ongoing basis, um, improve the services and supports that we are providing to the rural hospitals and rural communities that are the real purpose of FLEX. Um, so I think that's the thing I'm most excited about on this guide is how it's pulling together real examples and best practices from what some of our state FLEX programs are already doing. Um, and then emphasizing how this systematic approach to performance management and evaluation with a focus on improvement over time is a tool to help us all do, be more effective, I'll, you know, make better flex programs. And, you know, that's a never, never ending process. We'll um, always be identifying things that we can improve in ways that we can better serve um, the cause and the rural communities. But this evaluation guide has a lot of tools to help us get there. Uh, and ideally, I hope this is giving you, in the, as state program managers, ways, tools to help make some of your ongoing work easier. I think one thing that is emphasized in this guide is that to, you know, set up some effective evaluation structures for your program is work up front. But if we can get that done up front, then maybe your um, NCC progress reports and other grant reporting over the course of the year, followed by your PIMS reporting at the end of the year, will all be sort of pre-done and simplified. So that's my thoughts on pulling these pieces all together. Um, and I'm sure it would be a good time to see if there's any questions from other folks listening to the webinar. Thank you, Sarah. If there are any questions, we star two to unmute, or you can put those in the chat box as well. And Andy's posted the link to the resource. So you can go ahead and bookmark that <laughs> resource. Uh, as Rochelle said, it, it's uh, chock full of examples 
and uh, sample questions and uh, concepts and ideas of uh, planning and, and executing, communicating. And I did want to clarify, originally when we set up the webinar, we were anticipating this being a, a joint webinar for the Small Rural Hospital Improvement Program SHIP as well as FLEX. And as we were working through the, the guides and drafts um, with Sarah and, and um, Christy and FLEX and then uh, Soleil, Barry and Jenny Myers and SHIP, realizing that um, the programs are so different in the, the types of activities and monitoring, um, and they were two different guides going forward, um, more so than we anticipated. So we will be doing a separate SHIP webinar and publishing a, a separate guide in November. And in the spirit of assessment, Andy's posted the post-test. <laughs> so we're capturing uh, pre- and post-test in terms of building awareness and, and knowledge of performance management and evaluation. And, you know, it's something you and I have talked about, Sally, and I want to emphasize for folks on this uh, webinar today, is that we really want this guide to be part of an ongoing conversation about improving and strengthening evaluation and performance management across the FLEX program and really not a one-time thing. So if, um, you know, you guys, as you work on your state FLEX program activities, are there, you know, things you'd like to just dig into more with some of your colleagues? Are there other gaps? What are other opportunities um, and needs that you're feeling that we can maybe help, um, you know, continue this conversation around evaluation and strengthen our capacity program-wide to really use evaluation as an effective tool to improve our program operations? So please be thinking about that now and in the future. Sarah, and Andy posted the second part of our post-webinar uh, questions on the feedback for the webinar topic and a couple upcoming events. Yeah, so as you can see up above, we have dates for November Task 90, um, November 13th at 2 p.m. Central Time as well as MB Key for our Kita's virtual knowledge group. So uh, pretty quiet October webinar-wise, but we will get stuff sent out um, with the like, counter appointments and stuff soon, and also regarding topics. Um, so yes, if you fill out these last poll questions, you can just take note of those dates. And the quiet October, uh, speaking of upcoming reminders, will give folks a chance to keep working on your PIMS reporting. I know we've talked about it several times. Um, I have not had any reports of 